Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're looking at a problem in which we're going to apply the coefficient of restitution together with the conservation of linear momentum to figure out what's going to happen in a warehouse in which boxes are hitting each other. So in the first instance here we have this box uh, A coming in at 2 meters per second and the other two boxes are standing still. And then when this box hits box B, it will transfer some of its momentum to B, right? So we would expect B to start moving now and A to move slower. And then B is going to move, hit C. And the idea here is to try to figure out what's the velocities, uh, the resulting velocities after this collision. And to do that, we're going to be applying the um, conservation of linear momentum and the coefficient of restitution. So problem statement reads, packages in an automobile parts supply house are transported to the loading dock by pushing them along a roller track with very little friction. As the instance shown, the packages B and C are at rest, and package A has a velocity of 2 meters per second. Knowing that the coefficient of restitution between the packages is 0.3, determine the velocity of package C after A hits B and B hits C, and the velocity of A after it hits B for the second time. So note that it's already telling us that B is hitting, uh, sorry, A is hitting B for the second time, so it's hitting B twice, but it didn't need to tell us that we could figure out for ourselves. And we'll, we'll see that in just a second. Also know that we have little to no friction, so very little friction. So this is just a, you know, non-direct way of saying that we're going to consider that we are conserving momentum. We're not losing any energy due to the friction between the boxes and the loading dock here. What else? Um, the coefficient of restitution is 0.3. Okay, so coefficient of restitution is 0.3. And just a quick recap of what this, this guy is. So the coefficient of restitution, generally denoted by lowercase e, is the ratio between the restitution uh, and the deformation. Okay, so when a body hits another body, so when a is hitting b, it's going to, there's, I'm exaggerating this, but it's going to deform a little bit on the region that's, that's um, touching B. And then afterwards, it's going to um, restitute, I guess, which is like going back to its original shape, um, depending on the elastic properties of the material and the, the strength of it. We can go in, into more detail about how this, about this idea and the theory behind this. But the idea is that if we take all the, the time, during the whole time, the, the elapses while the two bodies are in contact, and that's going to be our um, capital R here, and divide by the whole time in which um, the thing is being deformed, then we're going to get this coefficient. And if there's two bodies involved, in this case we have A and B in the first instance there, then there's a, a further relationship that develops which says that the velocity of the second body on the second instance, so uh, on the aftermath, I guess, minus the velocity of the first body on the aftermath is the coefficient is equal to the ratio between this and the original velocity, so before the event happens, takes place, and afterwards, the B. So the one that B, there you go. So note first of that, you see, this um, this value here is greater than this one here, right? So because in this first instance, our, we know VA has a velocity and VB is nil. And then afterwards, for this to be positive as the point 0.3, then it means that VB is greater than VA, right? So it means that after... A hits B, velocity of B, the new velocity of B is greater than the new velocity of A. Cool. Uh, we can do another video in which we go over the theory about how this, this comes to be, uh, about what this means, and how we go from here to here. Okay, so just let me know if you want to do that. But we're going to take advantage of this to be able to solve this question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define this guy here as state one. Okay, so state one is the situation we're looking at right now, in which we have, you know, a VA1, so this is my VA1. One, this is two, and then our V B one is nil, and our V C one is also nil, right? So V C one is also nil. Okay, and I'm going to write this down um, the same drawing a couple more times. So I have it copy pasted here. So this is going to be my state two. Okay, and here we're going to have you know new velocities because now you know this guy here has what we dubbed VA2 for the second state, and we don't know this just yet. And this guy here is VB2 that we don't know just yet. And this one here is, you know, VC2, but with this one we do know, because nothing has interacted with C so far, so this is still nil, right? Nothing has changed for C. And I'm just going to do that one, two more times, right? So just state 3, I'm not going to write everything down again, hopefully you get the idea, and also state 4. Okay, so the difference between the states is that 
there has been a collision between the states. All right, so how are we going to solve this? Well, we're going to take advantage of the conservation of linear momentum as we're going from state one to state two. So what does that say? Well, it says that um, the before situation, let's write, um, so let's put it this way, state, the linear momentum state one, which is like the, put in quote, quote, the before situation has a um, mass of A times VA1 plus mass of B times VB1 plus mass of C times VC1, right? And then afterwards, and on the aftermath, so let's put it like this and uh, change colors, I guess, for state two, then what do we have? That's the, the after. In this instance of time, then we have the same thing, right? So mass of A, but then the A two plus mass of B, the B two plus mass of C, the C two, right? So then if our um, conservation of linear momentum, so the, the change in linear momentum has to be equal to zero. So if it's been conserved, then therefore, then we can rewrite this as just making these two guys. So if this is true, then this, these, this is equal, right? Now, first things first, we know that velocity of C is zero, so, no, so these guys could go away because of that. But even if they weren't zero, right, even if it was moving at one meters per second, for instance, these would be exactly the same because the mass of C and the velocity of C would be exactly the same. So those goes away, those go away. Also, the velocity of B originally is nil, so this is also nil. So zero, 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 and zero. So this means that this whole equation becomes, so therefore this just becomes the mass of A times VA1, this is two, right, two meters per second, uh, has to be equal to mass of A of VA2 plus mass of B over VB2. Okay, so know that just if the conservation of linear momentum, we wouldn't be able to solve this because we have two unknowns. Okay, because we have the interaction between the two bytes. So that means we're going to have to apply the this idea here. And that's where this guy comes in handy. So what are we saying here? Because we know the coefficient, uh, let's do coefficient of restitution is 0.3, then it has to be equal to what's VB2? We don't know. That's one of the unknowns we're trying to find out. What about VB1, uh, VA2? We don't know as well. That's one of the unknowns we're trying to find out. But we do know the bottom part of this, right? We know this guy here is 2, and we know this is 0. So this is just going to be 2 minus 0. No. All right, straightforward. So 0.6 equals the difference between the two guys there. Um, and over here, so now we have two equations to unknown. So it's pretty straightforward. Just need to relate these two equations here to be able to solve for VA2 and VB2. And pretty much this problem, that's it, right? For, in terms of theory and application, that's this is it. We're going to just repeat this idea um, time after time. Right, so um, let's do, do this one slowly and then we're going to speed up the, the other ones. Um, if I divide everything by mass A, I'm going to have that VB2 equals, actually, divide everything by mass B makes more sense here. Um, and then just the difference between VA1 VA minus VA2. Right, now, the a mass of a is eight, mass of b is four, so eight and four. So that is, this is just two, right? Eight over four. So that means that two equals the difference there, vb. So I can now relate the two equations. And I'm just gonna plug this idea into there. Take this away so it's not confusing. Okay, so this means that, so therefore, 0.6 equals two times VA1 minus two times VA2 minus VA2. Okay, so this is just three times VA2, and then we know this guy here is two, so therefore, this is just four minus 0. 0.6 divided by three, which is 1.133 meters per second. Cool, so this is, you know, um, a way towards the solution we're trying to find, which is, you know, way later in this in this um, situation here, but this is the first step. And this also allows us to now calculate VB2, because this would just be 2 times 2 minus 1.133, and this is 0.73 meters per second. Okay, so 
um, in terms of analysis, what we need to to um, make sure that happened is that our VB, remember that we, I said in the beginning that we would expect the new velocity of this box here to be greater than the new velocity of this box here. So we need to make sure that's happening, and indeed it is, right? Indeed, we have uh, B as 1.7 and A as 1.13. Uh, so in other words, if the problem would end there, so if we didn't do anything more, if we didn't have more states or, more, or, or this other box here, for that matter, then that would be it, right? Because VA would never hit VB again. Remember the problem statement saying, what's the velocity of A after it hits B for the second time? This would not happen if we didn't have this box C here. Because now what's going to happen is that we expect VB to hit VC, right? So we have this situation now. We know this, we just found out this is 1, 7, 13, uh, sorry, 1, 7, 3, 3. And we just found out this is 1.133. Right. So under this, under these conditions, now we know. Let me do a little. We know VB is going to hit VC, and what's going to happen? Well, VC is going to acquire a velocity because of the conservation of momentum, and VB will um, decrease its velocity. Right. So VB, we should expect VB to you know uh, lose some kinetic energy while VC gains some kinetic energy. So as we're going from state two to state three, what's happening is the velocity of B and C are changing. However, velocity of A is not changing because A is not hitting anything, right? So this means this guy here, so VA3, so we can write that down already, so let's say this. So VA3 will be exactly equal to VA2 because nothing is happening with uh, A from state two to state three. Uh, however, my VB3, I'm not sure, Actually, I, I am sure, and it's going to change. I'm just not sure what the uh, magnitude is, and I know VC3 is also changing. Okay, so to solve this, we're going to do exactly the same thing as before, conservation of linear momentum and using the coefficient of restitution, and then um, finding out what is what are the, the two new unknowns. Cool, so linear momentum, what do we have? Um, I'm going to refrain from writing VA, because I know that's going to be exactly the same on both sides of the equation. I'm just going to write, so mass of V times VB2, um, mass VB, VC2 is nil, but I'll just put down here just for the sake of it, okay? So we know this is zero because on, during state two, um, C doesn't have any velocity yet. And then afterwards, we know that VB will have a change in velocity, and we also know VC will have a change in velocity. So now we know VC3 is not zero. Okay, uh, what else? Coefficient of restitution. Is it still here? It is, cool. So what do we know here? So therefore, 0.3 will be equal to VC3 minus VB3. And then the B4 situation is VB2 minus VC2. This guy we know is 0. This guy we just found to be 1.733. Okay, so we have everything we need to. Therefore, And then 1.7733, uh, was it? Yeah, 733 minus nil. Okay, so note that now, again, once again, we have two equations and two unknowns, or two unknowns in this case are VC and VB, over here as well, VC and VB on state three. Over here, we know this guy is also 1.733. We know the masses, so again, just algebra. I'll do this quickly, speed this up, and then we move on. All right, so cool. So we found out the velocity of C after B hits C, which is uh, actually the answer for part A, right? And now we have, you know, a third situation because now we found the velocities for the, the different boxes after they hit each other. So let me just copy these guys so we can paste them down here. Cool. So now we know the situation here. We know that VC is 0.9 and we know VB is 0.38. Okay, so this is equal to this, and this is equal to this. And VA is still equal to whatever VA was in the beginning, was 1.133, because 1 nothing happened to VA 
in this distance here. Okay, so this is the situation we have now. Okay, so it's it's very good to you know stop and evaluate one state at a time because now we can see exactly what's going to happen. Again, if we ignore A, pretend A is not here, so then B would never hit C again, right? Ever because C has a velocity greater than B and it will just um, continue on and never be caught by uh, B. But in this case here, what we have what we have here is that we have V A coming in at 1.13 and V B just lost its velocity that was greater than V A. So note that now what happened is let's write it down. So now, now that is state three, my V A three is greater than my V B three, right? So we expect A to hit B again, which is what the problem statement said right in the beginning that I said we didn't need it to say so. We could have found out by ourselves. And this is it, right? This is us making sure this will indeed happen. And then the question was, what is the new velocity of A or B? Or what's the velocity of A after it hits B for the second time? So what we're trying to find out for part B is, what is this guy here, right? What is VA4? That's the, the uh, question on part B. And how to do that? Well, exactly the same way as before, right? So we're going to write down the same two things. The conservation of momentum. Again, I'm going to ignore C because the momentum uh, from state three and state four are exactly the same. Nothing's happening to C. So we're just going to write down that the mass of A times VA3 plus the mass of B times VB3 has to be equal to, because of conservation of momentum, the mass of A times VA4 plus the mass of B times VB4. And once again, two equations and one unknown. So we're going to need the second equation, which is the coefficient of restitution. Um, go ahead and grab it here. Right there. And once again, this is going to be so 0.3, which is a coefficient between these boxes, will be my, this is the aftermath, so VB4, VA4, divided by whatever is happening before. We know VA is coming in faster, so VA3 minus VB3. Okay, so once again, just algebra now to be able to solve this and finish it off. Let me go ahead and uh, speed up the, the process once again. All right, so we found out that the velocity of A after it hits B for the second time is now 0.811. Okay, so this would, obviously we could, this could go on forever, right? Because we can rewrite this, we can make a state five over here. And on state five, now we know there'll be a different situation um, happening because we know that B now has a different velocity, has a greater velocity than A, but we didn't calculate the velocity of B, we could have easily because now we know this one here, we can just plug this guy into here and calculate B. We don't need to because the equation doesn't ask us to, but you can see how this can be a never ending loop in which things are hitting each other. But hopefully you understood the reasoning behind this question. It's like I said, after you do it the first time, and then it's just rinse and repeat, pretty much just do, redo the algebra. The idea is how to use uh, the coefficient of restitution and also apply the conservation of linear momentum at the same time. If you um, have any questions, let me know and we'll be sure to address them in the comment section. If you want a video specifically on this guy here and how it comes to be, we can do that as well. And hopefully you had a, this was relatively easy and we'll talk soon.